So we're very pleased with the progress that's been made. You know, it's a major milestone for us to have completed this first successful repair weld and to have that weld pass all of the non-destructive uh, examinations that are required. So that's giving us the confidence to move forward into the more complicated repairs. So that involves a lot of tooling work. We insert into the reactor here the tooling necessary to clean the repair site before we do it. Then we introduce the welding tool, perform the welding operation, which on its own is quite a complex operation, remotely controlled. And then when we complete the welding, we go in and do a high precision camera inspection to confirm by visual inspection that all the surface features of the weld are good. And then we move into a choreography of three types of non-destructive examinations. Two types of ultrasonic inspection and an eddy current inspection. And that finishes then with a laser profiling to measure the shape of the surface that has been welded to record if there's been any uh, shape change in the vessel in response to the heat that's been applied through the welding. And so we're doing this at every site inside the vessel. But each repair requires the welders to be qualified for that particular location. And so in order to do that, we've got a lot of movement of the welding equipment in and into the vessel and out of the vessel. Then there's the equipment itself. And so the welders go through this qualification process. And then for each specific repair, there's a requirement to demonstrate through practice and through examination that they're qualified to do each specific repair site. And so that's what's happening here right now. The welders are performing weld tests in order to demonstrate on coupons that simulate the next upcoming repair site that they're good to go. And each of those coupons we subject to examination to confirm the, the positive outcome of each of the welds. So right now we're into a complex choreography of moving tools in and out of the reactor to do the weld preparation, to do the welding, and then to do the sequence of non-destructive examinations and, and the laser profilometry measurements inside the vessel. There's a lot of tool movement, and of course for each one of those operations inside the reactor, all the staff need to be qualified for it and trained, and so there's a, all the work that leads up to that to enable it to happen. But we've passed that threshold, and now we're moving into a production mode where we can prepare for welding, conduct the welding, do the examinations, and then come back and, and perform the next set of welds. We've achieved some great success to date, but we're still managing a lot of risks going forward. There are two principal risks, really. One is the stresses that are imparted to the vessel when the welding takes place. So we're managing the risk associated with the buildup of stresses in the vessel due to the welding. We're also managing the risk associated with the actual metallurgy of the vessel. There's been a lot of changes in the condition of the vessel in its properties through its 35 years of irradiation. So the metallurgy work we've done on samples that have been extracted from the vessel tell us that its current condition is unique. And because of that, it doesn't fit into an easily predictable uh, pattern of behavior for uh, uh, welding outcomes. And so we're having to manage that. And we've taken a lot of samples and welded on these samples and analyzed the results, uh, worked in the hot cells to characterize the, the metallurgy and the characteristics of, of the aluminum. But it's an issue that we're managing going forward. So we're proceeding through this carefully and methodically. Of course, we have to keep safety in top of mind, but we're driven to perform uh, all of the work according to the fastest schedule that we can safely execute. But there's a lot of technology involved in this. There's a lot of information that needs to be digested, evaluated, and then fed back into the path forward. So yes, we're proceeding carefully and very methodically but we're also trying to move forward as fast as we possibly can so that we can return to service at the earliest possible date.